what I learned in this field, I learned in the book by Viktor Berdichevsky. Uh, the first book appeared approximately 30 years ago, and now new edition appeared six months approximately in Spenger. Okay, let me consider the domain omega naught. Excuse me, maybe I'm old, but maybe you have. Okay, so. No, I'm, I have no stronger voice. Okay, I'll try. <coughs> okay, let omega naught be a reference configuration, and omega t is the actual configuration at time t. The motion of continuum media is just diffeomorphism from omega naught to omega t, and will denote each point in omega naught by capital X and the image of capital X is small x. Capital X are Lagrangian coordinates and small x are Eulerian coordinates. So this map small x is equal phi t of capital X. So we know very well how to define the velocity v. So it's just partial derivative d over dt phi t. So it is, and deformation gradient, F, is just Jacobian matrix phi t over d capital X, deformation gradient. And of course, we can consider these functions V and F in Euler or Lagrangian coordinates, and usually people use different notations. For example, we can use V not by saying that V is a function of Lagrangian coordinates and just V by saying that this is a function of Eulerian coordinates. The same for F, F dot and F. By, but I will use just the same notation for both Eulerian and Lagrangian coordinates by saying it's just V but indicating the arguments T and capital X, for example, or V function of T and small x. Okay. Now consider what is called virtual motion of continuous media. I will denote this virtual motion by x is equal capital phi of x and epsilon. This is a family, one parameter, parameter family of diffeomorphism from omega naught to omega t. Okay, having the following property, if phi of x and epsilon, and I put here epsilon is equal to zero, it's just phi t, phi t of capital X, t. So with this parameter is equal to zero, we obtain the real motion. And now let us define what is called virtual displacement okay Francesca used here eta, eta okay I will use the notation delta x which is just the derivative of phi t with respect to epsilon when epsilon is equal to zero okay so here, the sense of delta x is very simple. It's just deviation of the real motion from virtual motion. So indeed, this difference is just epsilon delta x. OK, indeed, we develop phi t in the Taylor series this is to, to epsilon, and we'll obtain the first term is just when epsilon is equal to zero, so it's just phi t plus epsilon delta x. So the difference between capital phi and small phi is just epsilon delta x. Okay. Now, So we discussed 
uh, what people call Hamilton's principle. I will formulate it explicitly. Suppose you have the Lagrangian L of the continuum, and we consider what is called Hamilton action. A is equal integral from T0 to T1 L dt. L is by definition the difference between kinetic energy and potential energy of the continuum. So it's just integral with respect to omega t, kinetic energy minus potential energy d omega. It is Lagrangian. Now what is Hamilton's principle? So the variation of the Hamilton action is zero for any okay delta x such that delta x when t is equal t naught is equal delta x when t is equal t1 is equal zero and delta x over d omega t is equal to zero. This Hamilton's principle. So roughly speaking, if you consider in the space Tx omega, for example, T naught is here, so we have some domain omega not, it varies with time, so we have a cylinder. T is equal to one. So variations delta x are zero at time t1, t0, and also at each time at the boundary d omega. Okay, let us construct some Lagrangians, classical Lagrangians, in continuum mechanics. So first one is the case of Euler equations of incompressible fluids. So in this case, kinetic energy. Okay, the Lagrangian is very simple. It's just integral with respect to omega t. Kinetic energy is rho v squared over two and the Potential energy is zero. So uh, this is Lagrangian. So it is Lagrangian. Of incompressible fluid. Fluid. But the problem is we have to add some constraints. So we cannot just find earlier Lagrange equations for these Lagrangians, some constraints should be verified. And these constraints are conservation of some quantities. For example, conservation of the mass, conservation of the entropy, if it is the case of compressible fluid and so on. So for example, let us consider the case of non-homogeneous fluid, incompressible fluid. The case of stratified fluid, for example. So we have to conserve the density, the density is conserved along trajectories. D over dt is just classical operator. D over dt plus V gradient is just material derivative. So conservation of the density along trajectories, A. And B, the fact that the fluid is incompressible. So divergence of V is equal to zero. So we cannot write directly earlier Lagrange equations because we have to understand what to do with these constraints. Of course, we can use Lagrange multipliers method. However, I will show another way how to manage these constraints. Second Lagrangian is Lagrangian 
of compressible fluids. In this case, the kinetic energy is the same. So L is equal integral over omega t rho v squared over 2 kinetic energy. But also we have to add potential energy minus epsilon as a function of two variables, the density rho and the entropy eta d omega. The internal energy epsilon should verify what people call Gibbs identity. Theta d eta is equal d epsilon plus p d tau. Tau is just one over rho, is specific volume. T theta is a temperature. And eta is the entropy. P is the pressure. Also, some constraints appear here. The first one is conservation of the mass. Rho T plus divergence rho V is equal to zero. The mass should be conserved. A and B. The entropy is conserved. So d eta over dt is equal to zero. OK, for example, now I will write the Lagrangian for elastic bodies. What Gilles explained to us how to write the energy of elastic body hyperelastic case, how to do that? There are two possibilities indeed. So the Lagrangian is equal integral over omega t rho v squared over 2 minus epsilon d omega, the same expression as in the, in the case of compressible fluids. However, there is an important difference. What is epsilon? Epsilon is a function of F, deformation gradient. Considering, for example, the case of isotropic bodies, we can propose two possibilities. First one, epsilon is a function of C and eta, it is entropy. And C is just F transposed multiplied by F. And second possibility, is to consider epsilon as a function of g and eta, where g is just f, f transposed. Both types of energy energies are OK, so we can use this type of dependence in the case when we consider uh, equations in Lagrangian coordinates, because with help of c, we can describe Lagrangian deformations. Okay? Varying that, we obtain Cauchy Lagrange tensor. By using G, this tensor is suitable for description. It's not G, so AFF transpose minus 1. So, by using G, we can describe the deformations in earlier configuration. So, this is very simple to understand. Indeed, so you have omega naught, omega t, consider just a point capital X here, and tangent vector d capital X, small x, d small x, tangent vector. So the related tangent vectors d small x is equal f capital x. And if you want to understand what happens with after the deformation, 
you estimate the difference d small x scalar product d small x minus d capital x d capital x so we can do by using two methods so in Lagrangian coordinates you replace d small x you obtain f d capital x scalar product f d capital x minus this one and finally it will give you d capital x f transposed f minus e capital x capital x so this is why when you consider Lagrangian coordinates you should use the tensor f transposed f but when you make the following you consider this difference minus f minus 1 dx scalar product f minus 1 dx so you need another tensor g it will be g small x identity identity minus g small x so it depends on the description earlier on or Lagrangian so both forms of the energy can be used okay and we have also some constraints added here and these constraints are slightly different from the constraints used for compressible fluids I will explain of course the entropy should be conserved along trajectories so always we have the equation d eta over dt is equal to zero the first constraint but also we have to add the following constraints the Lagrangian coordinates are also conserved along trajectories when you take the gradient of this equation and we commute the partial derivative with respect to time and gradient and we introduce the vectors E alpha I will write the definition of these vectors is equal to zero the vectors E alpha is just gradients of x alpha so this is constrained be respected also the fact that the gradients E alpha gradients we have to add additional constraint curl of E alpha is equal to zero one can prove that these equations imply the density equation for the density so they imply the mass conservation law so A B C should be respected what is the sense mathematical sense of this vectors E alpha so it's very simple suppose at time t is equal to zero you consider the planes capital X alpha is equal constant so in the domain occupied by the solid you have indeed the planes X alpha is equal constant the intersection of three planes give us a point so initially the vectors E alpha are just the vectors which are perpendicular to these planes so for example if you take initially X alpha as initial coordinates of points the vectors E alpha at time t is equal to zero form Cartesian basis so it is equal I alpha Cartesian basis just one question Gravis, uh, Eulerian. Eulerian, yes always 
uh, which is your source for this uh, thing? What do you mean source? Book? Where you have read it. You mean book? Okay. Where I found that? Do you know who invented this first time? Okay, I would like to say me, but not indeed. So, sure, you can find it everywhere, okay, but I, I cannot. So, it's just, it's just interpretation of equations, classical equations of hyperelasticity. Okay, sure, someone proposed that when they discuss this model with people doing solid mechanics, they said, okay, indeed, it's very natural, we did it. For example, people doing experiments, they do exactly the same. You take a solid and you put here lines everywhere. And then you apply forces and you see what happens with these lines. Okay? Indeed, what you see, you see deformations, variation of these vectors E1, E2. Okay? So at time t, it will be like this. Okay, this, this one, for example, E1, E2, so you see evolution of these vectors. Sorry, I'm going to pull your leg in public. Uh -huh. You are so intrinsically Eulerian. Yes, <laughs> this is why I wanted to, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I agree with this, hmm. this thing. No, it's quite natural. I think we can, have, we can find this interpretation in articles, but it's very natural, okay. Uh, okay, so this is very nice to see the evolution of these co-basis vectors. And what is interesting is the fact that indeed this tensor G I derived there, so G is equal just what it is equal F minus 1 transposed F minus 1 transposed F minus 1 can be written very easily in terms of E alpha. It is just the sum over alpha from 1 to 3 tends the product of E alpha, E alpha. This is very nice. Okay? So it's very easy to see why we can have this formula. Uh, indeed, for example, F is in Lagrangian, okay, just the following matrix. Dx over Dx1, Dy of Dx1, Dz over Dx1. X2, X2. Okay, and now if you consider transpose matrix, F minus transposed, the first column is just gradient of X1, gradient with respect to order and coordinates. Second one is gradient of X2, X and third one, gradient of X3. Okay, and now you multiply by F minus one, one can show you obtain just the tensor product of vectors. So it is just E1, E2, E3. Okay, so we have a number of variational principles. The problem is how to, to derive what people call Euler Lagrange equations for the Lagrangian with constraints. So we cannot just write Euler Lagrange equations in general case because we should respect these constraints. Conservation, for example, of these vectors, rotational is equal to zero, or conservation of the mass, and so on. I will show how to do that. So we begin with the case of incompressible fluids. Here you have equations. <coughs> uh, 
And first of all, I need to obtain some important formulas how to express uh, the variations of density, velocity, entropy, E alpha, and so on, in terms of virtual displacement. Delta X. On first remark, let F be any quantity, for example, a scalar, and I consider the variation of this quantity in Lagrangian coordinates. So I consider F tilde of T, capital X, and epsilon. family of virtual motions in Lagrangian coordinates. And now you consider the same quantity but in Eulerian coordinates. So I will denote it f hat of t and small x epsilon. So the same in Eulerian coordinates. How they are related? Very simple thing. So if I take the Eulerian quantity and I replace small x x by capital phi t of capital X and epsilon, I will obtain after that the same quantity in Lagrangian coordinates. So I will obtain F tilde of T capital X and epsilon formula star. And now I will derive this formula with respect to epsilon. So I take the derivative G over the epsilon when epsilon is equal to zero of star. So I obtain, first of all, okay, I will denote, maybe I have to say, first of all, I will denote delta tilde f, it is variation of f, when f is considered as a function of Lagrangian coordinates. So it is g over the epsilon f tilde of t capital X epsilon. So variation of f in Lagrangian coordinates. The same quantity can be determined in other coordinates. So I'll denote delta hat f, it is just derivative respect to epsilon, f hat of t x and epsilon, when epsilon is equal to zero, variation of f in other coordinates. Okay. Now we see that if I take the derivative with respect to epsilon of star, I obtain the following relation. So at the right hand side, I obtain just delta tilde f by definition, this definition, and on the left hand side, I obtain delta hat f, this derivative with respect to this quantity plus df over this quantity is gradient of f, gradient of f multiplied by delta x by definition. So very simple formula. So if you know the variation of some quantity f in Lagrangian coordinates, we can obtain the variation of quantity f in other coordinates and vice versa. So now it's sufficient to, 
to find the variation of all quantities in Lagrangian coordinates to calculate them in Eulerian coordinates. Okay, let us begin with a very simple thing. Conservation of the mass. How to find the variation delta tilde rho as a function of delta x? I will show it that it will be just minus rho divergence of delta x and divergence is taken in Eulerian coordinates. How to obtain this formula? Um, you now, conservation of the mass is a very simple thing. You take some domain d omega naught at time t equal to zero, and then this mass is conserved. So it will be the same mass at time t. And this mass is given by dm by rho naught d omega naught, and this mass is given by rho d omega t, but d omega t is just determinant of f d omega naught. So conservation of the mass is written very simple. It's just rho determinant f is equal to rho naught. Now we have to find the variation with respect to epsilon by using this formula for conservation of the mass. Okay, for this I will prove first of all the following abstract lemma. Uh, let A be an application depending on, on the parameter epsilon, for example. So let me define the determinant of A and trace of A in, by using some invariant formulation. So let w1, wn are some constant vectors. So I calculate determinant of w1, wn by considering w1, wn like column vectors. Then, by definition, determinant of A is a number defined as follows. Is determinant A W1, A W2, A W N. The definition of determinant of A. And trace of A, the sum of diagonal elements of A, is defined like this. Determinant W1, Wn is equal trace, uh, sorry, trace A, determinant A W1, Wn plus determinant W1, W2, R, W, N. So this is the definition of trace A and trace and determinant of A. Now what I want to, to show is just the following simple formula. If A depends on a parameter, for example, epsilon, then D of determinant of A is equal just determinant of A multiplied by trace A minus 1 dA. I'm sorry. I don't understand the form root Can you explain? The last one? Yeah. Second one. Yeah. The trace of A. Uh, 
Okay, maybe uh, the following thing. Let me consider W1, WN, WN as Cartesian basis, for example. Okay, this formula is true. of A is just trace of this matrix, it's a number, multiply by Z, it's just W1 matrix with the columns W2, WN. Okay, this is a matrix. And, and I think it's determined. Okay, so let me consider this definition first. Okay. I take D, so I have D determinant of A multiplied by determinant of W1, Wn is equal, I take now derivative sector epsilon of this formula. So it will be determinant of D A W1, A W2, and so on. A W N because plus determinant now you have to differentiate the second term. Okay. It will be A W one G A W two and so on A W N and finally the last term determinant A W one A W two and so on G A W1. Now I will replace each term with GA by the following. I will put inside A minus 1 A. Okay. Then and here the same A minus 1a, here a minus 1a, and here I see that it will be just determinant of a, okay, multiply by trace of a minus 1 dA, determinant of w1 wn. So comparing the left hand side and the right hand side, I obtain what I wanted to prove. In particular, this formula implies the following. If I have a relation rho determined F is equal to rho naught of capital X, and they consider the derivative with respect to epsilon of this expression. So I consider variation of the density rho tilde, determinant f tilde is equal to rho naught of capital X. And I take the derivative with respect to epsilon of this formula. So I obtain the following. It will be delta tilde rho, determinant of f plus rho multiplied by Z. It will be determinant of F trace F minus 1 delta uh, delta tilde F is equal to 0. Okay? But what does it mean delta tilde F? It's just by definition D over the epsilon of D capital phi over G capital X, epsilon is equal to zero. We can commute here the derivation with respect to epsilon and capital X, and I obtain just it is G delta X over the capital X. 
because the derivative of d phi epsilon respect to epsilon, uh, derivative of d, d phi respect to d epsilon is just delta x by definition. Okay? And now, uh, I have done this delta tilde rho is equal minus rho trace f minus 1 d capital X over dx inverse Jacobian matrix multiplied by z d delta x over capital X and it is just minus rho trace d delta x over d small x and this is just by definition divergence of delta x so it's minus rho divergence delta x so we have proved that delta tilde rho is minus rho divergence delta x so this is the most important formula and I will obtain other formulas for the velocities entropy and so on so we make should make a break for 30 minutes, yes?